2017, and I was in one of my favorite places on earth, in Art Museum. More specifically, I was at the Art Institute of Chicago. On that one day, during that one three-hour visit, the spirit of each artwork etched itself into my consciousness, just as my foot etched its outline into my new pair of red boots, clicking with each step I took to the galleries. I began by frolicking through Helio Otisica's white sand beaches and talking with a parrot about the oppressive military dictatorship in Brazil. I migrated towards my favorite Giorgio O'Keeffe painting, drawn to that same room every time by the magnificent foldings of color on a seemingly black and white canvas, and by the eerie realism that comes with the utter abstraction of every shape and line. I finally trekked over to the modern wing, where Oma Thomas, a high school teacher and painter from Georgia, roped me into outer space, into a moment of time so vast and yet so contained I did not know my up from down. She made me long for my home, yet wish for solitude. Then, as I turned away from these paintings, walking through the galleries towards my next stop, I looked around me, and I looked at the visitors. I realized I was utterly different than every other person there, and sadly, not because everybody was so diverse. I recognize most visitors as older, white, and wealthy. Now, let me be clear. There's nothing wrong with these types of visitors, and they're much appreciated by museums, as they make up most of the demographic that visits and supports these museums all over the country. But it was also saddening to see that one demographic getting to appreciate all the art. It was uncomfortable being the only teenager there, the only one in person or on canvas who looked like me, and the only one who couldn't afford the gift shop. <laughs> I can't imagine how much more uncomfortable it would have been for somebody who was just being introduced to the art world. Now, after all this, you may be wondering, why did I even go to the art museum in the first place? After all, these institutions have been riddled with oppression. They've misrepresented and misinterpreted excluded minority groups and culturally appropriated. This is all true. After all, can't art be seen in other places? Like that mural I pass every day on the train, or the paintings made by kids at Harold Washington Library after school? The answer is yes. Nevertheless, I persist in my belief that art museums are special and should be appreciated by all. I persist in my belief that art museums can be one of the greatest platforms of change and revolution, especially in the United States. And I persist in my belief that we should all visit art museums. Again, I hear you silently wondering if I've forgotten the tarnished power structures these museums have historically helped to reinforce, the power they've given to white, Christian, heterosexual, cisgendered men, the historically questionable ways they've acquired art, and the absences in the art they've decided to exhibit and appreciate. No, I have not forgotten. But in recognizing that problematic past, I also have remembered. I remember that one of the best ways to fix an issue in a major institution is by getting your red boot clad foot in the door. I remember the ways people have historically reformed power structures by diversifying the structures themselves. I remember the 40 new women sworn into Congress this year. These women recognized the homogeneity of Congress, but instead of shunning the institution, they worked to reform it, diversify it, and then use its platform for good. So, what kind of good can an art museum do? I recently heard Carrie James Marshall a renowned black artist known for his large-scale paintings, speak at the Art Institute of Chicago. He so eloquently explained that the purpose of museums is to give people an opportunity to engage with things that are magnificently done. It's so rare to find such a collection of magnificently done things, and the museum uniquely offers a space for this. The museum lives to be engaged with, 
And you have the opportunity to do just that. Viewing art in a museum setting is unlike any other. Psychologist and researcher David Reber actually found that viewing art in a museum setting improves one's understanding, enjoyment, and appreciation of the artwork in comparison to just viewing it on a computer. So, no, visiting an art museum is not quite the same as Googling a picture on your phone. Everybody's perspective is different. Everybody's story is different. And the American Art Museum has the unique opportunity to represent all those experiences, to paint the museum's own canvas, each brushstroke representing another story, another culture. As institutions, museums have the power to shape our understanding of art and how we interpret it in a large and publicly visible way. Museums are a platform with the strength to lift up and shape a narrative, a platform with the strength to alter their past misconceptions and with the longing to now promote diverse expression. Any art museum anywhere in the world can be an example of that change, of this movement towards equal representation and appreciation within art. Not only this, but art museums have the power to impact each and every one of you personally. Neuroscientist Jamie Ward actually found that multisensory experiences, particularly those in art museums, activate different neural systems which contribute to richer memories. Also, visiting an art museum has the power to improve your social connection to others. 61% of teens who participated in museum programs at the Whitney Museum of American Art said their experience greatly impacted their friendships, which means that this shared experience in the museum improved their connection to others and then deepened their relationships. In the same survey, 52% of the teens said their experience in the museum greatly improved their school performance, which sounds like something we could all use. <laughs> Your time at an art museum anywhere in the world has the power to provide an immersive, reflective, and memorable experience, improve your social connection to others, and impact your critical thinking skills. So, how can we make those benefits accessible and engaging to all? How do we ensure this bright future? To do this, we need to dismantle the oppression in artistic institutions. The first step in fighting this oppression is to be represented. This can include representation within the visitors, the staff, the artists on display, or even the subjects of the artworks themselves. And how can that be achieved? The most clear first step is to develop a diverse visitor base, one of all ages, races, religions, ethnicities, nationalities, gender identities, and sexual orientations. In other words, the answer to this is you. You need to show up. So why show up? It's not because I can guarantee that if you do so, you will fix all the issues in these major institutions forever. But I can tell you exactly why I've shown up. It's because change would not occur without the catalysts. It's because museums would not exist if visitors did not show up. And it's because these same problematic institutions are also incredibly meaningful. When I enter an art museum, a whole world is opened up one of pure imagination, believing, self-reflection, and feeling. If we completely disbanded these institutions simply because of their flaws, we would lose their ability to act as a platform for global voices of creativity. We would lose a place with the potential to be so broadening and so full of things that are magnificently done. Only once we have shown up do we have the opportunity to do more to make a difference, take an action, to insert your own voice and perspective. If we simply, let, let me bring this back to Congress. As I mentioned earlier, the influx of diverse congressmen this year has been an amazing step of progress that will lead to even more progress as these women work from within to reform policy. Now, 
Congress still has its issues. But if these women did not show up, the catalyst for progress might never have come. And we might never be able to mitigate these present issues. If we simply do not show up to museums because of their flaws, we will never have the opportunity to push for reform. And we will also never have the opportunity to reap the aforementioned benefits from our experiences within these museums. If I simply did not show up to the museum, I would never have gotten my internship. I would never have a community of people like I do at the Art Institute. And I would never have had the opportunity to collaborate with such diverse, powerful teen voices to reform the museum. But don't just take it from me. If you want more proof, here are signs that these methods of change are working. Slowly, but surely. A few years ago, the museum implemented free admission for Chicago teens. Following this practice, the number of teen visitors skyrocketed. In response to those changes in the visitor demographic, the Teen Audio Guide, made by teens for teens, was created at the museum by the Teen Council. More programs were organized and funded, like Teen Haze and Exuberance, which is a huge teen event involving teen-led museum tours, hey, that's me, <laughs> an open mic, and most importantly, a dance party. Just simply by showing up, these teens made an impact on the museum itself. The next time you visit an art museum, fill out the survey they send you. Scroll down your opinions on the comment cards, or give your thoughts on a new exhibit that was recurated. For the teens in the audience today, participate in museum programs, come to teen events, and engage with us in the critical discussions we are engaging in about the flaws in the museum system and how we can change them. Just the other day, Teen Council and another program called Teen Lab sat together on a Saturday and dialogued about the newly recurated African galleries at the Art Institute. We discussed the discrimination and racism that plagues the museum. Not only did we discuss this, though, but our bosses heard this. Within just a few weeks, a discussion was organized between our group of passionate teens and the curator of African art at the museum itself. We have planted this small seedling of change, and all of you can plant your own. You, the visitor, who may be... <laughs> who may be simply looking for a little time of self-reflection and quiet at an art museum. <laughs> Now, together. Thank you.